Well, good day everyone everywhere and special greetings to all those seated in heavenly places in Jesus our Messiah. The name of this broadcast is Cross the Border and I'm Nicholas and today is our live prophecy reality edition. So if you're listening on a Wednesday morning around 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon on the other coast, uh, then in likelihood this is a live broadcast. So uh, why don't you join us? Go to firstamendmentradio.net and click on the chat room button. And uh, there you can join the conversation. There's a call-in number in the upper right-hand corner of the chat room. And there's a little screen because we have the studio cam on. So you can see my face and any exhibits that I might put on the screen. Let's see, well, what do we got today? Uh, Hebrews 1.1 1, 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Yes. And God did speak in past times by the prophets, and today and since Christ came, of course, uh, many believe Paul was the author of Hebrews, so speaking to the Hebrew people, he says that in those days, yeah, the days that he wrote that, uh, he was speaking to us by his Son. And he continues to speak to us by his Son. We got the revelation from his Son. This being our Prophecy Reality Edition, it's only fitting that he is the last great prophet and not the false prophet that everybody's looking for but the last great prophet who uh, is also our king our lord and our savior okay what do we got today let's see second hour we should be jumping back into um, history unveiling prophecy and part 10 so make sure you stick around for that uh, first of all, we're going to take calls, comments, questions. Um, like I said, the number's in the chat room. It's 559-797-8537. So you can call in at any time during the first hour. So don't worry about interrupting me. I've got plenty to talk about, and I can always pick it up. Uh, your call is a priority to me. And your questions or comments in the chat room, too. And speaking of questions or comments, let's see. I believe that last week we had one left over, and that was from Blue Raven. He said, Nicholas, during the thousand-year reign, will we have fleshly bodies or glorified bodies? The answer is unequivocally yes to both. We will have fleshly bodies, and they will be glorified bodies. Because... Um, when Jesus appeared in the room, and he, a lot of the apostles were afraid that he was a ghost, well, he said, thrust your hand into my side because, of, you know, spirits don't have flesh as I have. And uh, so he definitely had a body, and he ate with them. And uh, so, yeah, I guess we'll be able to eat too. Uh, but the scripture definitely says that when we see him, will be we will be like him so while we won't have the same flesh and blood mortal bodies that we have now um well the 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 belief is that we will be if we're going to be like him while well, he was he was glorified and resurrected at 33 so we'll be in our prime too um is people that say they go to heaven and say they see babies or young people there or old people there i'm not sure about all that so <clears throat> if we're going to be like him, then uh, I think that we'll be in glorified bodies uh, at what our prime was. But, you know, that's kind of, I guess, a speculation. But basically it says we will be like him. So I'm looking forward to that. And I uh, hope every one of you are also. Okay, let's see. Do we got anything else in the chat room? Let me know if something pops up over there, Michael. <clears throat> yes, indeed. 
Okay. Well, hello everyone in the chat room. Uh, J.C. Eden and Naughty Pines House and Blue Raven are there and, uh, and WW and some people came and some people left. And I guess they just kind of automatically fall out of the room if they go to a different tab or something. So anyway, thanks for showing up. And if you're just listening, uh, thanks for uh, doing that. Also, there's a link in the chat room I put in there earlier. And uh, that is to share uh, on your Facebook. And I think, yeah, there it is right there. So if you click on that link, I just re repost it in chat room. You can share it on your Facebook. So maybe a few more people will show up and uh, and join us uh, for this hour. Okay, well, we do have some news items, so we're going to do news items first. This being prophecy reality news, <laughs> we'll look at a few things. See, my first article is from, looks like, uh, might as well just put that on the screen, desktop, there we go. And this is, uh, this is I have from the New York Times. Jared Kirshner is about to plunge into Middle East diplomacy. Okay, and this is a uh, few hours ago, I guess, or within the last few days this popped up. Let me see what we got here. Uh, Washington, Jared Kirshner, the presidential advisor who oversees bulging policy portfolio but operates mainly behind the scenes in his father-in-law's White House, is stepping out this week meeting with technology executives on Monday and making a foray into Middle East diplomacy days later. Mr. Kushner will travel to Israel on Wednesday and join Jason D. Greenblatt, President Trump's chief negotiator in the conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians. So Mr. Kushner or Jared Kushner, in case you don't know or have forgotten, is he is an Orthodox Jew. He is also as the article says, the president's son-in-law married to uh, Ivanka, is that her name? His daughter Ivanka Trump, anyway. And so they are uh, Orthodox Jews, so he's going to be over there uh, working out with the negotiations. on. Uh... Anyway, further the article says, uh, with for the conflict between Israelis, Palestinians, for meetings with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel. He is also scheduled to go to the West Bank for a meeting with Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority. White House, White House officials played down the likelihood of a breakthrough during Mr. Kushner's trip, but his participation is a potent reminder of the importance of uh, Mr. Trump has attached to achieving an elusive peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. It also demonstrates Mr. Kushner's determination not to let investigations into the Trump campaign alleged ties with Russia, blah, 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 whatever. Um, anyway, a senior administration officer said uh, Mr. Kushner's trip to the Mideast had been planned for several weeks as a way to build on the president's visit to Jerusalem last month. So they're going to try to heat up the pot over there and see if they can cook up a deal between the Palestinian Authority and whoever else uh, needs to be involved to uh, get a uh, peace deal worked out there in the Mideast. And of course, as we, we know from the script, and I've wrote about that in my latest book, when the third temple is built, that that will be a necessary part of, uh, of getting some kind of peace deal worked out where everybody's happy on the Temple Mount. And uh, anyway, so let's see what else we got. We got lots more we could say about that, but we'll save that for later in the broadcast. Let's see what else I've got on the on my list here. Oops. Oops, I just should not have closed that. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um Bennett. Okay, well here's one here. I'm not sure what this is worth. Bennett to propose supermajority to okay Jerusalem moves. Whatever that ambiguous uh, sounding headline boils down to is that education 
minister, Naftali Bennett. So I don't know what the education minister in Israel has to say about this topic, but he says his new Jewish home faction intends to table a motion this week to require a supermajority of 80 Knesset members to prove any measure calling for the division of Jerusalem. So I guess maybe he's a little worried about uh, Trump working out something to, uh, uh, you know, partition Jerusalem between the Palestinian Authority. Um, I think they would do it if they got what they wanted. If they got access to the Temple Mount, if they got the His Holy Mountain Initiative uh, to go into play where everybody gets a, a partition between the three great Abrahamic faiths, as they put it. Uh, everyone gets uh, three great Abrahamic faiths uh, coexisting together in peace on the Temple Mount. So I think that's really what we're working toward here. And uh, whether anyone else believes it or not, I believe it's the whole reason that uh, the whole Zionist movement was introduced in the last century. And anyway, by the forces that be between, uh, yeah, uh, if you were listening to Tom Fress, he was talking quite a bit about that in the hour before this broadcast. If you admit it, missed it, it's, it's in the podcasts. So make sure you listen to uh, Tom Fress's show today, and maybe we can talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, he continues, he says, I'm convinced the entire coalition and sensible opposition will join forces behind this important le legislation. Timing is crucial since it is important to make clear before the start of, dipl of the, a diplomatic process, so looking forward to the diplomatic process that is about to begin this week, that Jerusalem will never be divided under any circumstance, Bennett said. So, and from uh, the article that we read last week, it seems like the Arabs, the, seems like the, the spirit of the times that even the Arabs are ready to let go and uh, come to an agreement where they don't have a separate state. So we'll see how all that works out. Hmm. Yes, he says, I'm certain the bill will pass easily. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works. Let's see, what else do we have here? Let's close that window out. Um, yeah, we, we already read that one. And um, and uh, Michael might put a link to some of these in the chat room that we've already read in case you want to look at them further for your own reference. Okay. Ah, here's here's some interesting stuff. Uh, see, all, all the world wondered after the beast, they say. Uh, Merkel, this is the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, uh, says Pope Francis encouraged her to work to preserve the historic Paris Climate Accord despite the U.S. withdrawal from it and shared her goal to bring down walls between countries, not build them. So we have here the Pope behind the scenes uh, pulling the strings between uh, uh, the nations of Europe. So really, we have, you know, I believe that the U.N., is a uh, is a papal initiative. Uh, I believe also that the whole Zionist movement was a papal initiative to bring about what we have going on in the Middle East now, uh, to change the prophecy focus from the revelation to the Zionist movement. And uh, you know, I you know, redoing I, when I when I was uh, reading and re-editing. And, uh, and going through history unveiling prophecy, um, even H. Cratan Guineas about the turn of the century was all caught up into the Zionist movement hoopla that was going on. And he included it in his book, History Unveiling Prophecy, though he had no biblical references, uh, New Testament, um, uh, or revelation relevancy, uh, re relevancy attached to it whatsoever. So I, you know, I left all that out. I truncated the book, leaving all of the extra stuff out. And so he was kind of caught up into that thing. 
um, perhaps in the way, same way that I'm caught up into watching what's going on on the Temple Mount and the, because so many people are hooked into it. It's the same movement, the Zionist movement, building the temple when it's not the temple uh, that is spoken of in the New Testament, in any of the New Testament prophecies. In all the New Testament prophecy concerning the temple, we are the temple. I mean, that is plainly spelled out in uh, the epistles to the church that know you not that your bodies are the temple of God, that know you not that the, the church is the temple of God. We are the temple of God. And when the man of sin sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, well, um, the antecedent to the temple, if we take it from Paul, who gave us that prophecy uh, in his same epistles, uh, clarifies over and over and over that we are the temple of God. But it is something that uh, has, it's part of the great delusion and I, you know, I was thinking about uh, calling it something like uh, they had this strange fire conference uh, a few years ago, where they exposed this whole church movement, emerging church, new apostolic reformation. That's all very Jesuitical in its uh, titling and and in the movement, and it's very it's very Catholic. Uh, charismatic Catholic based and I found that out here on the ground uh, when I was uh, trying to get a home church you know going here and I found there was a, a home church movement already going in this area and as soon as I became engaged in it and to meet people and try to become part of the community church you know the church at the town or in the area where I'm at um, this uh, new apostolic movement, new apostolic uh, movement, they moved into it, they tried to take over, and basically they did take over the home church movement in this area, and they've probably done it in a lot of other areas uh, to, um, to capitalize on it with all of their charismania and kundalini babbling in tongues, wiggling on the floor, falling out in the spirit, laughing like dogs, I mean, barking like dogs and laughing like hyenas and uh, just a lot of utter nonsense going on. Anything to keep you out of God's Word. And so they, the part of the new apostolic movement is that they, well, they have new apostles and they have new revelation that goes beyond God's Word because they just do not believe that God would relegate us to a word that was written 2,000 years ago. Of course, the problem with their movement is how do you verify it if it's uh, God speaking new things to new people in their minds? <laughs> yeah, giving them new revelations. Yeah, well, you can see where that ends up with a, an apostate movement, which is what it is. Anyway, how did I get off on that? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, let's see what else we got. Sure, we got some other article here somewhere. Um, Merkel, okay. Oh, yes. Another thing we have here is um, accelerating technology to ensure that every person on the planet can access their unique digital identity as part of their basic human rights. Wow, you know, now they're. Remember the unique ID in America, how everyone fought against it. So some states haven't adopted it. But now it's a part of your basic human rights. Ah, see, 1.5 billion people live without an officially recognized identity. You know, it's just, it's just wonderful to see how all of this stuff is moving in the way that the Jesuits have been moving it. I mean, you know, they, they developed the Federal Reserve. They made all the right moves. Um, they established the Federal Reserve coup of the United States Treasury uh, over a hundred years ago. And they were working on it a hundred years before that. They got complete control in America. Um, well, not right away, uh, but the Constitution was a coup. And uh, the, yeah, the Constitution over the Articles of Confederation, that was a coup. To, um, uh, to concentrate power in 
little Rome over there on the Potomac. That's right. Uh, read F. Topper Saucy's books and, and follow the read the uh, uh, follow the footnotes and to verify everything. Um, you know, F. Tupper Saucy's book, a lot of it, you know, you, you might have to take it with a little grain of salt, but there's enough there to, to know that there's something to what he's saying. There's some speculation, but there's enough um, empirical evidence to go, something's, yeah, something's going on here. And uh, making the Jesuit connection with the establishment of Washington, D.C., yeah, that is the... That's the beast. That's the head of the Earth beast. Is Washington D.C. You know, and I was looking at it. it has two horns like a lamb. You know, but the way the streets are laid out, like with the Baphomet goat, the uh, inverted five-pointed star, uh, the sign of the goat. Yeah, it's a, isn't that like two horns? <laughs> like a lamb. Ah, just a thought. Things like little little things like that. And all of the paraphernalia and, and the, the icona, uh, icons uh, that are associated with Washington, D.C., and it being a, a separate city-state. And I wrote an article about that several years ago, uh, the unholy trinity that rules the world. That's right. So you can look that up on my website. It's usually trending over there. Let me see if it's trending today. Okay. Maybe it is. Go to my website, crosstheborder.org. And uh, in the left-hand column, oh, it's not trending today. But anyway, you can just put a research, put on Holy Trinity in the search box. Not really a search box anymore. It's just a little magnifying glass in a green box. If you click on that, the search box comes up. So, And type in Unholy Trinity in there. And the article will come up for you, and you can read about that. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? I'm putting all that stuff on the screen. Okay, so anyway, all of this stuff is, uh, is it, we shouldn't be surprised. All of this was given to us in advance, and that's the whole idea of prophecy. So we see all of the things that the prophecy said would come together in the last days coming together. We see the one world monetary mark system developing before ID, our eyes. Uh, has to be a unique ID. And then, you know, finally turning, um, turning this identification system into a basic human rights. Right. Uh, that about takes the cake, but that is like the frosting on the cake. Anyway, we're going to go into a break here. And uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. We'll talk about these things and a couple other things. Your calls and comments. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border. 
crossthborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crossthborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossthborder.org. Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. It's our Prophecy Reality Edition. Oh, what are we going to talk about now? Let's see. Poland shoots. Oh, Poland shuts border to Islamic migrants to keep potential terrorists out. Good move, Poland. Yes. All those Polish jokes. My ancestry is Polish. So, on my mother's side. So, uh, I say yay. Yay for the Poles. Now, Angela Merkel say, but then I'm German on my father's side. And, uh, I don't know. I'm not really happy with the German people. They don't allow homeschooling. And they seem very, uh, totalitarian to me. And then this Merkel woman letting all those, uh, you know, uh, Islamists in her country. <clears throat> and then they all act surprised or they think they can fix people with all of their humanist ideas, but yeah, I guess uh, it shows us who's really in charge with her over there, making Google eyes at uh, the first Jesuit Pope. Pope Francis, Jorge Bergoglio, that's the guy's name. Okay, let's see, what else do we got? Oh, I'm not even on the screen yet. Yeah, I'm out of it this morning. I still had the... Uh, the break thing up there, the thing that you see during the break. I'm already overheating. I think I need more water. Uh, now, any comments, questions, or calls? Anyone want to join me in the chat room <laughs> on this terribly hot day? Only 76 here in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, it didn't even get that cool. Yes, I, we haven't seen 76 probably in a week, even overnight. There you go. Ah, no, nothing? Okay, I guess I'm on my own. Okay, well, does God speak to people in dreams? Oh, Sid Cook says, does God speak to people in dreams? Now, thank you, Stella. I will try to take care of myself. I'm drinking plenty of water and trying to stay out of the heat as much as possible. Now, Michael's a brave one over here. <laughs> 112 yesterday. Hey, I'm going for a bicycle. I said, well, enjoy your alone time out there. Did you see any bi other bicyclists out there on the road, Michael? I didn't see any other bicyclists. He didn't see any. You hardly even see any cars when it's that hot. And you know those people in those cars have air conditioning on. Whew. Okay, anyway, got a serious question here. Uh, Rick Wiles says he gets message from God in his dream, says Sid Cook. Does God speak to people in dreams? Well, I'm pretty sure that, uh, cause I saw that thing about Rick Wiles. What was his dream about? We, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah, the, the waves. Oh yeah, the waves. Yeah, anyway, you know, uh, he had a dream and he gave us the interpretation, his own words. He said, this is how I interpret it. See, if God gives you a dream, then God's going to give you the interpretation. See, that's what I get from the scripture. Either that or the dream is going to be the, so clear that it doesn't need interpretation. Okay. But if you get, if you have a dream with sim symbols in it that seems like, but not really nothing conclusive, then that's probably all you had a dream of was a dream of waves and, and stuff. But, you know, no uh, interpretation from God. I don't think it's from God. And uh, Rick Wiles has given prophecies and had dreams over the years, most of which have not come to pass. You know, so, you know, I take everything he says with a grain of salt, uh, with a few grain of salts. I, I think his news program used to be okay when it was one man, one microphone, but now it's you know, five or six men and a woman and five or six microphones, but he still says one man, one microphone. 
He also says, announcing the countdown to the return of Jesus Christ. But I'd never heard him announce a countdown to the return of Jesus Christ. So eh, I take everything he says with a grain of salt. Not seriously. He's got some good news items. And, you know, he calls it a ministry. But I think it's really a news show. So I don't think that's really a ministry as far as I know. I mean, I, I know Jesus talked about news once during his whole ministry. There, he only recorded about the news once. And that was when he talked about some building that fell on some people and killed them. Yeah, yeah. And he only used it as a inserted into one of his little uh, sermonettes there to make a point. Uh, but other than that, he wasn't reporting on the machinations of what was going on in the Roman government around him at that time and stuff like that. So, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having a news show, um, but calling it a ministry, I don't, it wouldn't go that far. But I guess if you want to. Okay, Eric Phelps says, God does not talk to people. Okay, yeah, true news is part of flowing streams, says Sid Cook. Well, yeah, that's, uh, Rick Wiles created the TRU, not try, not quite true news, because it's not TRUE. So it's, it's there's a little, a little hint there I think in the name, that it's not quite true news. <laughs> anyway, uh, part of flowing streams. And yeah, that's our whole Rick Wiles uh, creation, the flowing streams thing, whatever that means. He's got his new Flowing Streams church that he bought for a million dollars. And he even admits that he borrowed money to do it. So where did he borrow that money from? The bank? Is he now making enough money in his business? His uh, LLC or whatever it is, a corporation soul, making enough money that he can actually borrow money from the bankers? And look, he doesn't give you any of this information. He just throws out little hints now and then of what's going on. <clears throat> he says, uh, there is another TRUE news, that's why. Well, maybe that's why, I don't know. Uh, that's why, maybe, maybe, how many years ago was it? Uh, 12, oh, no, 17 years ago, someone had already taken TRUE news. So he named it TRU news. I don't know. Anyway, like I said, all news, take with a grain of salt. Um, and I'm glad that he doesn't play his sermons during the week, though. I found them a little bit unpalatable, <clears throat> that, you know, from his church that he bought. Yeah. Okay, let's see. But he does have some good articles up there, and, and, uh, you can follow the leads to get to the articles that he, uh, he comments on to see where he got him at. But I don't know if we should say any more. Uh, did I answer the question about the dreams? I mean, I've had dreams myself, but, you know, I would never put the dreams over the Word of God. Uh, we get much more from the Word of God about prophecy and what's going to happen. I don't see anything about cycles and waves in, this, in the prophecies in Scripture. I think if I think God works in a certain way and, and that if he's going to give you dreams that, uh, then he's going to give you an interpretation or give someone else an interpretation by the spirit of that dream and, and that you'll be able to somehow tie that or verify it through God's word. Otherwise, you can't trust it. If it can't be verified by God's word, then you can say, well, you know, I know there is a, there's a gift of knowledge in the scripture, and I do believe in the spiritual gifts that are in the scripture. There's the gift of prophecy, and of course, uh, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. So when I sit here and I, I, I share God's word and I share the prophecy written in God's word, then I'm prophesying, because Paul said, "Seek that you may prophesy," to because it was. It was edifying than some babbling in tongues or something that edifies nobody, uh, something like that. So we seek to edify, we seek to teach and build up through the prophecy, through the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, the financial meltdown. Um, he said that his dream, I guess his dream is that he interpreted his dream that he had after, what did he say, after pizza? It was a dream he had after something. Um, well, I don't know. I saw it on the page. It was after something. I don't know if it was a meal or uh, his after his sermon. After his sermon. Oh, after his sermon. I don't know why that's important. Your dream's always after something. <laughs> Hopefully it's after you fall asleep. Uh, otherwise you'd be calling it a vision. So, but he had a dream after something and he said it, and he said that I interpret it, so it's his own interpretation. And, uh, cause last time I had a dream and I shared it, I even put it in my book. Um, I didn't get, I didn't interpret it myself. I got my interpretation uh, from the Spirit, uh, gave me the interpretation. It was verified by God's Word because that's where I, the symbols in my dream came out of God's Word, which I was studying. And perhaps he doesn't get the symbols out of God's Word because he's not studying it. I don't know. So, anyway, and I wrote about my dream in my book, and I didn't spend a lot of time on my last book, uh, When the Third Temple is Built, and uh, I wrote about the, you know, the dream I had, but, and I indicate that dreams usually mean nothing, and they're not as important as God's Word. And that's why I wrote about my dream, just to make that point, that a lot of people have dreams, and most of them are nonsense, especially if they're getting their, if they're making up their own interpretation. But, cause, you know, you could have a dream and you could say, well, you look around and you go, well, what's happening? And, uh, and then you try to fit your dream to what's happening, and that'll work every time. Okay? So, and then you can say, well, maybe it's from God, maybe it ain't. Maybe it's like, like I said, maybe it's from the pizza that you had the night before or something. Um, okay. So, what else do we have? Oh, yes. So speaking of the dream and what's going to happen and stuff, and you know, we've talked about all this before. And that's why I brought up this article here. Um, uh, and this is, this is from, and they just introduced this into the, uh, UN, uh, NGO, this, uh, 2020.id2020 initiative. And it has something to do with the 2030 thing that they got going on, but it's a public-private partnership dedicated to solving the challenges of identity for these people. The 1.5 billion people who live without an officially recognized identity. And, uh, you know, everyone's worried about, oh, well, here's, here's what the significant benefits. Let's go through their significant benefits. Unique to you and you only. Yeah, and only you. Um, persistent. Lives with you from life to death <laughs> and beyond. Yeah. Private. Only you can give permission to use data. Yeah, well, you know that's a lie. It's private. Yeah, well, they're going to make you believe that it's private, except for people with access to it, like government agencies and anyone else who can hack it, or anyone who else has, just has access to it through the government agencies, because, you know, People do work for the government. And so all of these bureaucrats will have your information. And, uh, you know, the, if they want to shut off your card and your accounts because, let's say, you're, um, you're classified as a financial terrorist or something because maybe you're doing something that's outside the scope of, re of reporting requirements of the New World Social Economic Order, the, let's just call it the mark of the beast, well, then it won't be private, will it? Um, hmm, yeah. So, it, yeah, it'll be private from everyone that doesn't matter. <laughs> but the government, well, uh, oh, portable, let's see, there, there's another one. Accessible anywhere you happen to be. Ooh, wow, doesn't that sound... Just don't you, don't you just want to run out and get it? Don't you want to participate in this? Especially when you realize that it's, it's a, um, basic human right. That's right. It's a basic human right. Oh, now I got to have it. It's a basic human right. How about my right not to have it? 
Now, how long will that be upheld? The right to not participate? Well, I think that's where the problem is going to come in because they're going to say, you must participate. You do not have a right to not participate. And uh, that's really where the waves and the cycles that um, Rick Wiles puts so much faith in, they lead to. But God's Word told us about it, you know, that everyone would be required, yes, rich, great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, uh, will all be required. You know, go back to chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. Uh, all be required to have a mark, to buy or sell or trade. That's, that's the point of this whole thing. And uh, they're getting everyone numbered, but still this, this article says 1.5 billion people live without an officially recognized identity. Well, I say hooray for that. And I say hooray for the few people. You know, there's 7 billion people on Earth, so most people have an officially recognized identity out of the 7 billion people on Earth. There are just 1.5 billion people who live without an officially recognized identity. Uh, me, I have a 20-year-old expired passport. That's the only identification ID uh, document I have. Um, and they won't even accept that. I can't even get into the airport beyond the screening position anymore. I uh, can't cash a check or a money order. Even if I purchased it at the post office, uh, the police still accept it and let me go when they, when they happen to stop me out there on the road while I'm traveling in my private automobile. So I give them, I guess they have to accept it because it's all I have. <laughs> that and my travel document. So if you're interested in my travel document, go to my website, crosstheborder.org. And you can scroll down in the left-hand column, and I believe you'll see something there that says uh, something about ID or something, anyway, or your documents, your papers, please. I think it says something like that. Follow the link, and you'll see a facsimile of the, uh, the travel document I use. It's a one-page or two-pages double-spaced uh, legal document <clears throat> signed under penalty of perjury telling them why. I do not participate in the Mark of the Beast. It's a religious issue, and also it's a legal document. Like I said, it is the opening document of a case and of a court case. Uh, and just in, if they want to challenge me, so they have a notice right off the bat that we will go to court. And until it's required, until the Antichrist. Uh, this Mark of the Beast system becomes mandatory, which it's not, it's voluntary right now, still is voluntary. You lose a lot of privileges. You can't have a driver's license. You can't get a professional license. You can't get a loan from a bank. Getting a bank account may be doable, but very difficult. You have to find ways to work around it. Um, you can't get credit cards and things in your name. And uh, so they make life very difficult. Uh, Right now, I want to get my passport renewed, so I have to jump through a lot of hoops because I don't have an SS, Social Security number, Mark of the Beast, to buy or sell or trade. Because that's basically what it is, is a number to buy or sell or trade. And uh, it is the Genesis, which along with in Canada, they have the SIN. I, I love that acronym, SIN, Social Insurance Number. Here it's the SSN, Social Security Number. In Great Britain, it's the NENO National Identification, uh, National Employment Number. That's it, NENO, NO for number. Um, and they, you know, some other states they have different names, but it's all the same thing. Uh, Social Security is now by treaty, gone nationwide. And uh, don't forget where they administer all this stuff in the United States. Of course, they administer it in. Maryland, that's right, over there in Maryland. So if you're a uh, national citizen, uh, a citizen of the federal government, I should say, um, then, and if you have a Social Security number, you are actually, whether you believe it or not, because just because you don't know doesn't mean it's not true, 
but it is true you are a federal employee if you have a federal ID number. You are a federal employee. Yeah, that's right. If you have a federal employee number, you are a federal employee. That's why you have to report to them because you are employed through them, uh, by them, through their federal employment system. And of course, we know that all of this was created uh, by a generational conspiracy. And of course, at the head of this conspiracy is the dragon who gives his power to the beast, who is the very head of the Antichrist. See, because he gives his power unto the beast. So we know the power behind the Antichrist that sits on the seat of the Antichrist uh, at whatever time. The whole line of Antichrists that have cropped up since we've seen the Antichrist uh, on the scene. No, he's not some character that's going to show up during some fantasy, uh, fictional fantasy left behind uh, fiction that has been developed for you and developed upon the Jesuit Ribera's end time antichrist scenario. So this lie, this deception or delusion that has been sold to the Protestant world to, well, effectively, so they could say the protest is over. Because it basically is. If you believe in futurism, if you don't identify the papacy as the seat of the Antichrist, then you are not a Protestant. <laughs> I don't care what you say. You protest nothing. You accept everything. That's right. And uh, just keep your blinders on because uh, just march step into the New World Social Economic Order, the numbering system for the mark of the beast. And that's what Rick Wiles' dream was all about, what he sees going on. He didn't need a dream to tell you that out of the chaos that is coming, they will develop their new world social economic order. We'll be back in a bit. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator. 
for his holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening.